that's the most important thing. I want my kids to remember that I did my work well, that I went to my job and I did it well, and I was, it, I was fulfilled and they were fulfilled. And that's a very personal side. Joining us today on the Dusty Wright Show, the designer Joseph Abood. Hey, Dusty. Pleasure. Great to see you again after all these years. Exactly. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Thanks. The, the new headquarters. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty special, you know. Um, building brands, it's not just about the clothes, but the environment and, and really kind of the perception to the market of who you are and what you're doing. It's, you know, the creative process, which you're in, is the most exciting thing, but it's there's so many components to it, right? You know, and that's what's made, you know, any creative project I've been involved with so interesting. Not always easy, you know, yeah, but, sure. But but a lot of challenges, um, you know. But I've loved. I mean, sometimes I ask myself, why am I actually doing this? I don't. It's because I love it. It's just, it's not work for me. It's never been work. I I really love my craft, you know. Well, I, you know, we were up here the other day, and I was watching you, and you're you know you're you're looking at the fabrics, you're touching them, you're yeah. looking at stitching. Yeah. It's what I've been doing for the last 30 years, and, and the funny thing is, I can stay late at night and have a pizza and look at fabric and be the happiest guy. I don't need to go all the glamour parties. You right, know? Yeah. I just love my work. Sometimes I don't love the fashion industry, Right. but I really love my work. Either. You know, when you look at suits, and this is really information for guys, you know, th some of the things you need to look at is the way a lapel rolls, right. and that's the quality of pressing, and you can just see the way you can see it's not flat pressed like a frying pan. It's it has to be pressed a certain way. Um, the way we create our buttons, for example, there's something called a button stand. Most guys don't understand that. I have no it's idea. a quality way of sewing a button on a garment that lifts the button basically off the garment, ah. so that it's easier to button. It's stronger. But all of these are quality issues. You know, Hickey Freeman, where we make this in Rochester, the experience of going through that factory and seeing it yeah. is a dream for guys who love clothes. You see these gorgeous fabrics that come in from Italy. This is a great Glen Plaid from a mill called Laura Piana, which is one of the finest mills in Italy. Or you look at a beautiful, you know, simple chalk striped suit. Right. And you look at it where you see a slightly narrow lapel, and you see clothes are a little leaner, a little closer to the body. You kind of see the suppression and the shape. Right. All of that's important. This sleeve is actually what we called to be prepared so that you can actually have working buttonholes. And that's a sign of. Yeah like Savile Row and all those cool, great right, London right. streets, our factory still does this. So a man so, can buy a suit, he gets his sleeve fitted. And then the And buttons. then we put in what we call working buttonholes. I love which it. Which is really a very luxurious way. So that's a cool thing. If a guy could have one suit like that, you feel a little cool, a little sexy, a little rich, even if you aren't. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. you kind of feel that way, and that's the way to get there. Right. Once you start feeling it, that's how you get there. You know, I was thinking about uh, your style sense. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about uh, cinema. Yeah. Is there a character in a movie or a movie that, that defines the Joseph Abood style, your personal style? You know, God, you know, films are, for so many of us in the creative world, it's just such a, you know, uh, a wealth of, of information. And I think about it all the time, about great films. Um, interesting, 1973, The Great Gatsby comes out, and Robert Redford looks amazing. You know, Ralph Lauren did all the clothes. He did a great job. Yeah. But he did what was supposed to be 1920s clothes in 1973 style. Uh -huh. You know, ties were wider, silhouettes were kind of more flared. It was kind of a specific time. Right. But I've always loved the style. There's one scene where he's showing um, Mia Farrow his shirts. And I don't right. know if you remember the film, but he goes into his closet and he takes all these Turnbull and Asser shirts and he starts throwing these greens and yellows and pinks. And the shirts are kind of in slow motion, kind of floating you know, up and through right. the, it. Yep, so there's so many great images in film. But I always loved the hero. I mean, it wasn't so much that there was one guy. If you look at, you know, Cary Grant that we all right. used, he was like amazing. If you just look at the way the clothes were made and they were pressed, and they were made in America. Those clothes were made in America and they were beautiful and soft. And even with black and white films, I sometimes wonder, like with Casablanca. Right. I look at the clothes and I say, that must have been, because it's black and white. Right. 
that must have been a beautiful colonial khaki suit, and he must have a brown and white polka dot. Right, and I always yeah, that's great. To guess, yeah, yeah. I only wish I could have a time machine to get yeah. back. You know, colorization of films was a disaster. If you go back and look yeah, at the yeah. style of the clothes, they must have been dreamlike, you know, and that's an, oh. a lost art. But film has been, you know, for me, it's kind of the romance that I like in fashion. It's the hero. Um, even a great film as late as 1980, 81 with Chariots of Fire. Right. All these great cool tweeds and right. beautiful sweaters. and Or um, out of Africa where there's all these great khakis and ivories. So there's lots of moments of inspiration. Yeah. Also like using pattern. Guys haven't really learned how to do this. Um, you know, it's very cool to be able to do sort of the Savile Row look with a striped shirt, striped suit. Yeah, as I was always told the opposite, don't wear the stripe with the stripe. Yeah, but you know, the rules are changing, but you kind of have to know how to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could do a whole, you could do a whole story on that. But here you saw, we see uh, a striped shirt with a white collar on a Glen plaid. Nice. How, how would you like to be remembered? What's your legacy, do you think? You know, for me, and, and I, this is going to sound perhaps as corny, I just want to be for my. I want to be remembered as a great dad. That's the most important thing. I want my kids to remember that I did my work well, that I went to my job and I did it well, and I was it, I was fulfilled and they were fulfilled, and that's a very personal side. As far as our industry goes, you know, you don't do this as a for a legacy, but I also want to know that I made a contribution to American menswear mm. that sort of changed the face of it and how American men dressed. In the scheme of things, it's not a cure for cancer, and we didn't put a man on the moon, but we're all little specks in the universe, and you know, you, you need to feel that gratification that you've accomplished something, whatever that is. And I want, that, I want my kids to learn that, that it's about them and not what other people perceive you as, you know, and, and pass that on to their kids. Great answer, yeah. great that's answer. How, you know, that's kind of my life at this moment. Yeah. What one piece of clothing does every guy need? You know, I'm sure yeah, this is this that's is this a great is, one. That one. I, I mean, you know, Esquire spends a whole issue yeah. on hum, you know a million pieces you need. Right. But you know, it's you like, know, I, I think there's and really season, let's talk season to season because you know the European model is is you know, you don't need to buy 50 things. I love that. That was always the great thing about Europe. Let's start with that. You know, you used to wonder how do Amer how do European guys look so good and American men make so much more money? What is this? The European mentality. Italy, France, uh, um, the UK, is buy less but buy better. Instead of having 10 mediocre suits, buy three great suits that fit you beautifully. Right. That's, that's kind of the mantra. And I think from an economic point of view, you're much better off. You have three things that are going to last. You rotate them. You use your shirts and ties. You use them a different way. It's not about disposable fashion for guys. Right. And they, you know, why look mediocre? You know, to me, every guy should have a great navy blazer. Right. That's like that's the guy's basic. That's the that's the the counterpart to the woman's little black dress. You know. Right. The guy's gotta have the navy blazer. Right. Now, every guy should have that because you can wear it with jeans. You can dress it up. You can wear it to a wedding. You can wear it to a funeral. You can wear it to a bar mitzvah. You can wear it anywhere. Right. Have a great navy blazer. And also, if every guy wants to be James Dean and wants to be the hero, have a great leather jacket or a cool leather vest or something. Just those things that give you a little bit of personality. So there are some of these iconic pieces, you know. Great. Yeah. When you come to a suit, every guy should have a cool, beautifully fitted gray suit. You know, that'll take him anywhere he needs. Interviews, you know, whatever. Now, when you get up in the morning, do you like, you know, your mood dictates dictates the pattern, the suit? Yeah, the but when I wear, well, you know, it all depends. Like some days, and it's kind of the role playing. You know, some days I want to be the chairman of the board, so with the dark suit. And, you right. know, I want to be this guy. Right, right. Some ga days I want to be. Just like you, I want to be in my jeans and my blazer because I'm working in design and I want to be comfortable. Right. I don't need to impress anyone. I just need to kind of get there, roll my sleeves up, you know? And I don't always want to be, you know, as a designer, you run around, I'm going, he's a designer. If I go to the gym, I got my torn sweats on. Right, right. But that's okay. That's what I love doing. It's all part of, you know, style should fit in your life. It right. shouldn't dictate your life. And that's... That's me, the message. Yeah. But if you do want yeah. a beautiful suit and you want to go to a great restaurant and get dressed up, Fantastic. This Great. is the way to dress. All right. Great. Style tips. Joseph Abood. I think that's the show. Style tips. Let's do Joseph, it. Joseph, man. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being with me.